Here's part two. We talked about the Minutemen and they were established at the First Continental Congress. However, they will, um, Britain will be unhappy and Britain is gonna send more soldiers to try to restore order and, and show that they're the boss. Um, on April 18th of 1775, the British governor of Massachusetts found out that the Minutemen had a secret stash of weapons in the city of Concord. And Concord was about 20 miles from Boston. And for the Minutemen to be having their own weapons to use against the British soldiers, that would have been viewed as treason, basically. Like, why are you hiding weapons to protect yourselves from your own army. Um, and Britain did not look kindly on that. And so uh, Britain's plan was to send British troops to Concord to steal the weapons in the dead of night from the Minutemen. That was the goal. Now, the Sons of Liberty had been watching. The spy network they had established, they found out that the British were intending to take back the stash of weapons and they are going to alert the people. Um, and the Sons of Liberty organized a secret signal, two lanterns that they hung in Boston's Old North Church to warn the Minutemen of the British arrival. And I'll show you a map of this in a minute and it'll hopefully make more sense. Um, but they sent this lantern to warn the Minutemen and then they're going to send out multiple people on horseback to ride through the town in the dead of night to wake up the Minutemen. The British are coming, the British are coming, the British are coming. Paul Revere is the most famous, you may have heard a poem or a book read to you in like fifth grade called, um, listen, my children, and you will hear of the midnight rite of Paul Revere. We're talking about that at this point. William Dawes also accompanied him and made it farther than he did. Paul Revere actually gets arrested during the process. Um, and even a girl, 16-year-old Sybil Ludington, rode through the night to warn of the militia coming, to warn the Minutemen that the British soldiers were coming to steal the weapons back. And that brings us to the shot heard around the world and or the battles of Lexington and Concord. Um, whoops, let's go back here. Or not. There we are. Okay, cool. Um, the next morning on April 19th, about 77 minute men were awaiting when the British arrived in the town of Lexington, which is about five miles off from Concord. So the Paul Revere, Sybil Ludington, the Minutemen, they had been woken in the night. They are ready to meet the British at Lexington. There was a standoff, kind of, you know, the Minutemen are on one side of the, the bridge and the army, the British army is on the other side of the bridge and somebody's gun goes off. And to this day, we do not know whose gun went off. We don't know if it was a Minuteman, we don't know if it was a British soldier and fighting broke out, it was kind of chaos. Um, the British that day, they will never get the Minutemen stash of weapons at Concord. So they were unsuccessful in stealing the weapons back. So that was, you know, good for the Minutemen. Throughout the rest of the day, if you were to describe kind of what happens after that initial gun going off, it's chaos. It's fighting back and forth between Boston, Lexington, and Concord. Um, the Minutemen were able to drive the British back, even though they were the bigger, better army, um, all the way back to Boston. Um, because of their knowledge of the countryside, they knew, you know, the best hiding places. Yeah, they used camouflage. They also used sharpshooting skills in the woods, which is kind of like when you pick off somebody one by one, they used like guerrilla warfare and tactics that the British weren't expecting or were used to using. And so that is how they were able to successfully drive the British back to Boston. Um, here is a map, and I hope that this is helpful to you. Here, here's the story on the map. April, that night before, the night before, the Sons of Liberty find out that the British are gonna steal the weapons. They find out that the British are going to take this route by sea. They're going to cross by water and not by land. They're gonna cross over the water and take this route. So they hang two lanterns in the Old North Church over here. The Old North Church is over here. The Minutemen and the Sons of Liberty spies are hanging out over here and they see the lanterns and that is the signal. So then they send people like Paul Revere, Sybil Ludington, William Dawes. They ride through the night to Medford, to Arlington, to Lexington. These are riding through the night. They're banging on the doors. They're yelling in the towns, wake up, wake up, wake up. The Minutemen, you need to assemble. The British are on their way. So in the morning, the British men, the British soldiers and the Minutemen meet at Lexington. The shot goes off. We don't know why or who, but it goes off. And they're fighting towards Concord. And then there's fighting all the way back and forth. It moves back and forth about who's kind of pushing who around. And by the end of the day, the Minutemen, unprofessional people, push the British Army, the best army ever, back all the way to Boston. And that was huge. 
at this point, the shot heard around the world, this, this battle of Lexington and Concord is a big deal. Britain is super embarrassed because the best army on the world in the world lost to these like super unprofessional ragtag colonists. Now that we've had an army, the British army fighting another army, the, the colonial Minutemen, the colonies say, I think we need to meet up again. I think it's time to have another conversation. And this is known as the Second Continental Congress. Um, they met in Philadelphia in May of 1775. This is about a month after the shot heard around the world at, at Lexington. This time, it's serious enough that even George is like, mm, I should probably go visit. I should probably attend this meeting. And so this is a big, serious second meeting. Keep in mind, these Congress meetings, they're not one day. These are like weeks and weeks of discussion and debate. Um, and they include people like Thomas Jefferson, John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, all the famous names are there. And they're going to discuss three big things over the course of many weeks. Number one, are the colonies ready to declare war on Britain? Are they ready to declare their independence to become their own country, which would mean basically declaring war on Britain? Number two, should the colonists form a continental army? Take a minute in your notes. Um, there's a bullet point underneath this chart that says, how is the continental army different than the Minutemen? Two big differences, one or three big differences, actually. One, they would be professionally trained. Two, they would be paid. And three, they would represent all 13 colonies, not just like individual towns or cities. Again, how would the army be different than the Minutemen? They'd be professional, they'd be trained, professionally trained, paid, and they would represent all the colonies, not just individual towns. The third topic for debate is if we're gonna make an army, how are we gonna pay for it? Because paying for an army is super expensive. The solutions, the decisions they came to after weeks of debate is one, we're not quite ready to declare independence. We're not gonna do that yet. Instead, let's write the Olive Branch Petition. Um, the Olive Branch Petition, we're gonna talk about this, is in the next bullet point underneath your chart there. It says, you know, why was it called the Olive Branch Petition? Um, I'm gonna fast forward here for just a second. Um, it was considered a symbol of peace and Olive Branch is, is symbolic of peace. If you're giving someone an Olive Branch, you're trying to make up with them. Um, this petition, the document, it swore the call, Colony's loyalty said, we're not going to fight you. We are still loyal. But it again asked him to repeal the intolerable acts. And the king is like super ticked off. Um, they literally said, we are loyal to you. We don't want to fight you. We want to work this out peacefully. But he took it as an act of rebellion, which is the next one. He viewed it as an act of rebellion. And he is going to respond by sending 20,000 more soldiers to the colonies to put down this terrible, horrible unrest that he views it as to be. So that is a little bit about the Oliver Ditch partition in those last two bullet points there. Um, on the question of should we form an army, they decide, yes, we're gonna do it and George Washington will be our leader. And then they're gonna pay for it by printing their own money. And that's only a short-term solution. It's gonna create debt. And we'll talk more about that later. Yeah, I'm gonna pause here. 